Hey guys, one of the most common questions we get is how do I get started with looping? So let's talk about that today. This is gonna be a very, very basic thing for people who don't even own a looper yet, maybe get you some education on what am I looking for in a looper, uh, or if I have a looper, like how do I even get started with this? If you want something a little more advanced, you can talk to Joe Denenzone, Rob Flax, Andy Reiner. Those guys have some great videos and great resources for you. This is gonna be super, super basic, okay? So when we talk about basic, we're gonna talk about what the equipment you need is. We'll talk about the difference between a one and two button looper. We'll talk about a single or multi-channel looper and then how to get started. So hopefully you'll feel like you've got a little better grasp on what's going on in the world of looping before you make any purchasing decisions. For your basic equipment, you need an instrument with a pickup you know, some way to make an electrical signal that you can send to your looper. Uh, you'll need a looper, you need an amplifier, and then a cable to connect those together. So your instrument with your pickup via a quarter inch cable or instrument cable into a looper through another quarter inch cable or instrument cable into an amplifier. That's the basic setup. Now, what does a looper actually do? A looper records a phrase that you play and then plays it over and over and over again while you do whatever it is that you want to do while that phrase is playing. Okay, so when we hit the record button, it's going to record layer one of our loop, and that's what sets the length of the loop. So if I'm going to do a four bar phrase, I hit record, I play my four bars, I hit the button again, I have recorded layer one, and then one of two things can happen. It can either play that loop over and over, or it can put you in a situation where you can dub on top of what you've done. Um, say you want to play the same thing again, but an octave lower, right? So you can put layer two and can record another part. And that's going to be part of this loop that rolls. And then you can dub generally as many times as you want. Most modern loopers have say 99 layers in them. That's way more than anybody's going to sit there and watch you make. Um, and then once you've completed making all the layers of that loop, it can just play and you can play along on top of it. Um, sort of the most common looper or the most, uh, sort of the, what most people start with is a one button looper. They call it that because it's got one button, um, one foot switch. So you're gonna tap it once and that's gonna start recording. Uh, you tap again to go into overdub mode or play mode. That's why there's an asterisk there. Sometimes it depends on the looper. Sometimes it depends on the setting, whether you go directly to overdub or whether you go to play mode. Uh, but either, either one. Uh, and then you'll double tap to stop the loop. And if you tap and hold, it will erase your loop. Okay, so that's a one button looper. Now, you got a lot of stuff to keep track of in your head. Am I in play mode? Am I in rec mode? Am I in, am I in overdub mode? There, there are some different things you've got to keep in your head. And one of the reasons they've gone to a two button looper is to separate out some of those functions. So you don't have to remember, okay, am I in record mode? Then I have to hit this. And then the button's this, if I'm in overdub mode, a two button looper separates out some of those and it reduces the number of double taps and some possible confusion between play and overdub. But you still have to basically figure out how to make this looper do what you want it to do. It's really fairly simple. A guy like me can figure it out. Pretty much anybody can. It takes a few minutes, but that's the difference between a one button and a two button looper. Sometimes a two button looper can separate out some of those record, play, overdub, stop functions. Um, and each one's different how it separates those out. But you might decide in your head that you want a one button or two button. One button's probably the most common for people to get started. And then there are different channels. A basic looper has one button and one channel. That means there's one phrase and phrase length that can get recorded and then played, overdubbed, and stopped. More advanced loop pedals might package several of these single loopers into one big pedal. And then you've got three basic, basically separate loopers. Say the RC300 has three separate loopers in that pedal. And those can be run either side simultaneously or sequentially. So you could have loop one and two playing at the same time. And you could program it to say, when I start loop three, one and two stop uh, and all that. So you've got some options when you go to multi-channel loopers. It's a little more advanced. I would recommend for a beginner 
to get a one button, one channel looper, it's, it's, it's going to be easier for you to learn. Some of the challenges that you're going to bump into is the timing of the start and stop. We talked about a four bar phrase. Uh, when I kick the button, that's when the phrase starts. When I kick the button again, that's when the phrase ends. If I kick it exactly on four bars, then we're good, right? If I kick it a little late or a little early, I could end up with a loop that doesn't loop right. So if it's, I might end up with a, a thing where it's bop, 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 because I made my loop too long, right? And then it's going to have that little galloping thing. Or if it's too short, you get bop, 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 right? So it doesn't, it doesn't actually work out as a exact phrase. So the timing of your start and stop are pretty important. Um, also, is after you're recording your loop, every mistake you make, you're going to hear that mistake however many times that loop plays. So if you flub the second note and you run that loop 20 times, you get to hear that mistake 20 times. Uh, one of the other challenges, if you have a multi-channel loop, is sort of keeping those channels separate. Oh gosh, is, am I recording it a loop two or loop one or loop three? Um, and then making interesting arrangements. Remember, as you're putting your arrangements together, that your audience is watching the whole time you're doing this. So don't think, well, I'm just going to build this loop for four minutes and then I'm going to play 60 seconds of really interesting music. That's not a 60 second performance. It's a five minute performance and your audience is watching the whole thing. So you want to make sure that the building of your loop is also musically interesting. That's one of the challenges of doing looping. The benefits of looping. It's a great practice tool. It's a great composition tool. Uh, you can perform your own accompaniment if you're performing live, which means you can make more money because you don't have to pay an accompanist, you just pay yourself, right? Um, there are a bunch of parameters as you're looking at loop pedals, mono or stereo. I would suggest for most of you, mono is going to be the way to go. How many different layers will this pedal do? Most loop pedals can do more layers than you're going to use anyway. Uh, so that's not a super important one. Although some of the older loopers, you may notice that they don't have 99 layers or they don't have essentially an infinite number of layers. How many minutes long can the looper go? That's an important one. You may find that some of these only have 60 seconds worth of memory. Some of them have up to an hour of memory. So it depends on how long you really need this loop to be. Uh, how many channels? We talked about single and multi-channel loopers. Do they have hard storage? Meaning, can I record uh, layer one and layer two of this loop at home and then I can just recall it when I'm in public and you guys don't have to watch me make the entire sausage, maybe just part of it, right? Uh, some of them have a little drum machine in them uh, and then some of them have quantization. And what quantization is, remember when I talked about getting your loop exactly right with the start and stop? If you have a click track in this loop, say there's a drum machine in the loop, you can set it to say it's going to be four bars and then I only have to start it and the machine will end it at, at exactly four bars and I don't have to worry about having a 4.1 bar loop. So um, those are just a couple of the parameters that you may find as you're looking at loop pedals for the first time. Uh, my advice for first timers, a one button, one channel looper, learn how to use it. And then at that point, you'll sort of discover, do I need more or do I not need more than this? And these one button, one channel loopers are usually around about a hundred bucks. So it's not a huge investment uh, for a whole lot of usability and a whole lot of practice time and a whole lot of fun. Um, some of the most fun you'll get out of a hundred bucks uh, in a music store. So all that said, thank you guys for hanging out. Please subscribe to our channel. Check out a couple other videos we got and we will see you next time.